I swear I have the coolest job on earth. I get to run around things like this and play with them and push all the buttons and just have fun all day. And this one, this was really a treat. This is a really nicely kept triple slide Laredo that just came in on trade here. And it's it's beautiful. I, I, I Frankly, I bet it is physically cleaner than the day that they hauled it off the uh, RV dealer's lot initially. The folks really liked it overall. And so the question, I, I had a chance to speak with them. I'm like, why would you want to get rid of this? It's a very sharp coach. They said, basically, we want something with a little heavier climate package and the second air conditioner that uh, this one didn't have. And a Laredo's a really nice product. There's not a whole lot of room to upgrade from them uh, within the industry, but a Montana would definitely be one of those. And that's what they swapped into. I think that this is a really good fit for some potential full timing, especially if you've been if you've been looking at a new RV, you've had a hard time getting a hold of one. This right here is going to be a sharp way to save a huge amount of money and go full timing compared to a brand new one today. And I say without exaggeration, I truly feel we could actually just go park this up in our new RV section of the lot. And I, I don't believe the casual onlooker would even be able to discern the difference. This is in factory condition, better than factory condition. And if you're not familiar with Laredo, this is actually the predecessor to today's Arcadia. Laredo became Arcadia. Not everybody's quite aware of that. But the story kind of remains the same. This is a sister or a cousin to the Keystone Cougars that we have here at Haywood RV. The idea, though, Laredo's goal was to try to give you the features of a one size bigger fifth wheel in something the size of a Cougar. Good examples of that are that giant 18 cubic foot two-way refrigerator there, just like a big Montana, an avalanche or an alpine rather, um, uh, you would have that. I believe this is also stackable washer dryer capable, which fifth wheels of this size traditionally are not. The seating is not scuffed up and worn out. There's good window coverage all over this thing. And remember, this one has that camp kitchen buried behind the entertainment center. But there's something about the way that this floor plan works for me. Um, you have like, even though it's just a, a double slide kind of grand room style living room, we have oddly clear definition of a rear living room with that theater seat directly across from the entertainment. You got a conversation couch that opens into a trifold hide bed with storage and outlets beside it. But the, the wall of that entertainment center, it kind of defines where suddenly we're traversing now over into dedicated kitchen space and moving away from the living room. So there's, there's even though it's wide open, it's open and airy and spacious, it's very clear, the kitchen's up there, the living room's back here, and it doesn't really bleed together all that much. Uh, and again, good window coverage all the way, all over the place. Like you see a full window in the door, up in the hallway. This is a two plus two kind of luxury dining arrangement where there are two folding chairs that come with this. I have those uh, squirreled away up in the front closet. We'll get to see all of that in a minute. Solid surface countertops here in the kitchen, and again, uh, a pretty good, like, the kitchen's way better because you look at this thing and it looks a little flat. It opens up. And one of the things they did here, it's like a Dr. Mindbender kind of twist, is you see that big pantry on the left right there? There's, that's actually like a smoky glass window. You're actually looking into the pantry, but there's a pantry light above that. It, it just visibly, I love the look of that. It's simple. It, I'm sure it's inexpensive, but it's different it is feels cool. I like the little coffee bar right there. All kinds of good storage space. And again, that's a serious pantry space over there. Notice too, uh, this kitchen, pretty good for right-handers. Lefties, I, I do apologize. They did not really treat you nicely beside the stove. Not a whole lot of counter space there, but good easy access kitchen drawer space with an XL drawer below that uh, larger 22 inch stove. And once again, this has a giant full-on luxury fifth wheel refrigerator. And, and especially considering the stackable washer dryer prep that's in this one, I think that this is a sneaky good option for uh, some potential full-time RV in right here. And this island, I see some notes from some other Keystones. Like the way that they handle the sinks is very Montana-esque, giving us that one extra large farm sink and then the smaller veggie prep sink, but always with the solid surface covers there. Down below, good spaces for our, you know, dish soaps and all that. But the 
double wastebasket space there. Once again, that is one of those nice little touch features that you often find in some bigger luxury fifth wheels and three more drawers. So there's what, eight total drawers in this kitchen, uh, seven of which are just normal traditional utensil sized. And then obviously you got the one extra large uh, drawer below the, oh my Lord, I blanked, oven. <laughs> I forgot the word for oven. <laughs> Oh my lord. Anyway, also, if you're cooking up a storm, that XL vent fan right there likes to exhaust a lot of that heat and humidity, keeps the smells out of the camper. Not to mention the fact that if it is, it's not a day where you want to be uh, cranking up the air conditioner, you can just leave the windows open and get some really good airflow going through here. And as we go upstairs, holy cow, this is a, this is a good bathroom. I really like the arrangement of this because normally, you're, you're kind of forced between making the decision between a big shower or a dual entry bed and bath for the kind of easy nighttime come and go. This one is giving us both the big shower as well as the dual entry because I'm actually standing in the bedroom recording this right now. Or at least I was just a second ago standing in that door on the right there. But the asymmetry on the bath counter, kind of like the island, it means that you, you always have some good counter space available. You're, you never have to worry about doing the naked streak through the camper, trying to get a towel uh, from that linen cabinet or like trying to reach some toilet paper. And the drawers, are, like this, this is an exceptionally well executed bathroom. I love the arrangement of this. And again, if somebody is sleeping on that hide bed, this is dual entry. If you like to get up and down at night a lot, uh, this is gonna be a good, good option for you here. But you might've noticed something. This is actually something that really surprises me right here. I'm a little shocked that this was built without a second air conditioner. I know that second ACs were an option almost exclusively, especially in this class when this was built, but this is a big triple slide RV. Now, thank God it is uh, second air ready. It does have a 15,000 BTU main air conditioner. I tell you another thought process here because there is a wiring junction box there. If you wanted to upgrade that to like one of those big power vent fans, that is a, a much easier thing to do than, than to try to fish wiring through the roof. But I, there's two things I think I would do with this RV if I, if I were going to purchase it. And by the way, nice stand-up headroom in here too. This is, I'm impressed. This is a sharp RV. Um, I, I've always felt one of the greatest strengths that I personally have is I can recognize, I think, the positive qualities of other RVs that we don't carry here at Halet RV. And this is a very sharp one. I totally understand the appeal. I love the warm look and feel of this. I get it. I get the attraction. We haven't even gone outside. This thing is fantastic. There's a lot of good stuff to come. But what I was getting at, I would do two things to this RV. First, I would go ahead and uh, install the second air conditioner in this. Second, I would upgrade to a set of stable steps outside because this was built just before those stable steps kind of really took over the industry in force. Other than that, Throw in some mac and cheese and applesauce, and this thing's ready to go. This is awesome. So we were standing over there, kind of in the hallway area. You see directly across from the bed, we've got ourselves the entertainment station. And you might have noticed the buckle strap on that TV. Um, what's nice is that TV is also on a swing arm pivot. So if you want to get that out of the way, or you want to be able to get back there and plug in some, uh, like, uh, Roku sticks or something like that, you can do that here. But what's nice is you see down below, some good dresser space, too. I don't know if you could hear in the background, uh, when I'm recording these things, I've learned over the years, it's kind of a smart idea to deadbolt myself inside of these things uh, to just kind of limit interruptions. And sometimes I'll hear somebody pulling on the door handle. It was actually the previous owners coming to make sure all of their original owner's manuals got back inside of this. These are the, these are the exact kind of best people you hope uh, had the RV before you. Now you see over there, there's the washer dryer hookup, I believe you could put a combo in, uh, well, combo for sure. You might be able to do a stackable. It might have to stick out a little bit just due to the curvature of this. But I noticed that because there is a dryer vent mark up here instead of down low where you would tend to see them most of the time. I think you might be able to finagle a stackable in there as long as you understand it's not going to be able to close behind those doors. By the way, 70 by 80 king bed in here with the, uh, you know, the breeze through windows. And you see those uh, two chairs up in that front closet. Those are the two full away guest chairs that I don't think ever got used. This RV, like I said, it definitely qualifies for the, the phrase like new. And you know, even the exterior of this, like it's, it's not brown. It's not, it's like, it's like taupe. 
Is that, is that, like, you know, <laughs> men, we only know the eight colors that are in the, uh, the simple Crayola pack. I don't have a 64 pack of colors in my head. But it's, it's, it's in that lighter tan range. But it's not like a dark, boring brown. Like, it still looks fresh. It still looks good. But it's nicely, calmly understated. And it really just has, like, a, a good feel to it. But this, this outside entertainment center right here, I had to pull forward so I didn't get run over by this truck. He didn't seem to care that I was standing here. But hey, hey to each their own. Um, this outside entertainment center here. Because it is a full outdoor entertainment. Take a look at it. So, like, you look at it and say, oh, it's just a camp kitchen. Well, the bonus drawer down here is nice. Our cooktop space and that shelf space with the power outlets up there. But then you see a full-on microwave, big refrigerator, and that is a stereo and DVD unit. This has completely separate inside and outside entertainment. What's also kind of cool is you see that built-in TV. It just sort of slides in that little pocket. It does the, the electric slide in behind that refrigerator. Now, that's a very cool feature because I could see myself out here doing some patio picnic party kind of stuff, grilling and chilling. Maybe just throw a 10 by 10 easy up screen room over there or something. Over here, we got that nice wider 30 inch entry door protected by that uh, awning space. And uh, geez, I mean, this is just, this is sharp. You got a lot of patio coverage space up here. Nice space for a picnic table there. Do the grilling out back. Whatever works for it. I mean, there's a few different ways to do this. And once again, remember I said how... The idea behind a Laredo was to do the stuff that Cougar does and then go a step bigger where they could. One of the areas where they did do that is a larger 10 gallon water heater, like uh, like I said, maybe like an Alpine or an Avalanche or something like that. And it's not a drop frame storage compartment out here, but holy crap, tell me that's not some big outside storage space right there. This would be a lot of fun. You know another neat thing you can do? This is classic Keystone. They don't always do this anymore is this is an ABS molded bucket, basically. But one of the things they do is they always drill a little weep hole right there. You can actually see the daylight through it. If you didn't want that there, you could certainly plug it up. The idea though, is if you wanna make this a, uh, a party chest, like a drink space, you can literally just pour ice in this thing, start packing your drinks into it, and you can have a nice little open drink station here. Of course, you could uh, you know, close the door and you could key lock it. Like if you're the type of person, everybody has that, that one friend, we're going to call him Manny the Moocher. He never brings good drinks, but he's always trying to drink your good drinks. You know, he's always trying to get your top shelf rum or whatever, but he, he brings like Miller High Life to share. <laughs> you can keep Manny the Moocher out of this thing. We all know one of them, don't we? There is no skin fade, no weathering no peeling it, uh, flaking. I haven't located so much as a scratch from a tree branch or a stick on this thing. It looks phenomenal. Inside, outside, upside down. Simple solar prep plug right in front of the dual 30 pound tanks, by the way. And I kind of like how they did this. You've got your pass-through compartment that we saw and then a completely separate kind of uh, hookup station in here uh, that you can, you can open and close independently. And the reason I really like that is because that door has to, it, it can't open all the way because of the bed slide right there. So you have one small door that these little screws can handle very easily instead of one giant door that will, I guarantee you, eventually rip its way out of either the baggage door or the sidewall. So it's just, it's just not likely to happen. It's just simpler and easier. It's gonna last very nicely here. This does have an enclosed underbelly. It is forced air heated. It does have a pretty good extended season package, but once again, one of the things from the, the owner's own mouths, you don't even have to take my word for it, they wanted something with that heavier climate package, which is one of the reasons they went with the Montana. Now, as long as we're hanging out down below here, you see that four-point automatic leveling system, the ground control 3.0 right there. The tires are looking absolutely fantastic, and you see the rubber shock dampener between them. This is running on Dexter axles and suspension system, which is a, a very heavy-duty, reliable package out there. Um, as we work our way around the back, um, one of the other things that the previous owners mentioned, one of the reasons they did want to go with the Montana, is that it has a, uh, a towing hitch right on the back, and this did not. You could theoretically go to a fabrication shop and aftermarket something like that, but a lot of fabrication shops are actually kind of getting gun shy about doing that. It might depend on the shop, but a lot of them are so overwhelmingly busy right now. They're not looking for extracurricular individual RV work. So 
Again, based on the other things that the previous owners were looking for, it just kind of made sense to just do a, a, a full swap out for them into that Montana that already had everything they were wanting to upfit on this one. And this roof looks terrific. This is the way that you want roofing to look. It needs a very brief surface bath right now, but it has been very actively maintained. I see the uh, Max Air vent cover that they added above the bedroom right there. The seals, this is what I saw about. The seals have been very well kept. And where I really noticed it is I can tell they were up and down here because they've already done some touch-up beads around the ladder stanchions where they uh, meet up here on the roof. You can see two slightly different colors of ceiling. That means that they were up here, they were doing TLC proactively, not reactively. And I'm telling you, folks, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure any day of the week. What do you guys think? Could you see yourselves causing some trouble in that one right there? Because, I, I mean, I could picture myself in it. I, I chilled out on that uh, that recliner in the love seat, maybe, maybe a couple times, just sort of trying it on for size like a pair of pants. <laughs> This thing is beautiful. You are not inheriting anyone else's problems. Like I said, I'd slap a second air conditioner on it. I'd personally upgrade to a set of like more ride steps and I'd hit the road. This is the right length for good towing. You can still fit into a lot of spots. Uh, this is a potentially good fit for three quarter tons. A one ton would certainly work. We're not half ton towable here. Uh, so, so please don't ask. <laughs> but overall, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. And I, I think I'm just as impressed with the coach as I am with the TLC that the previous owners put into it. This is a fine. It's not going to last. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.